we probably need to pump the brakes a little bit. Now, I'm not trying to just to discredit it whatsoever at all. They are a very, very good team. Vaughn Miller looks like a fountain of youth out there. I don't know where he got his legs back, but he looks fantastic right now. And, and I was 100% wrong saying that he was over the hill as of He's right now. He's on a now, mission, man. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I believe he wants to be the first player ever to win three Super Bowl rings on three different teams or so. I, I think it is. Yeah. But, yeah, yep. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely very, very possible with this. But when we think of most dominant teams ever, we have to look back at the 2007 New England Patriots. This team was Rasha with a bunch of, quote, over-the-hill players, right? There was Junior Seau on that team. Uh, Randall Gay was on that team. Troy Brown. Uh, I believe Randy Moss was on that team as well. I mean, we had a lot of players on that team that many people thought were well past our prime, and they made this dominant, dominant team in New England in 2007. They went 16 and 0. They I think they ultimately went 19 and 0 and what they lost in the Super Bowl to the Giants if I'm not mistaken, if that is the correct year, if my memory serves me correctly, but I would say the most dominant team ever was that team because that team you didn't know how they were going to hit you. Was it going to be an, was it going to be another touchdown pass to Randy Moss or were they going to run the rock 30 times a game? Like it was so unpredictable and with the Buffalo Bills you pretty much know what they're going to do. They're going to fling it all over the field, get to Gabriel Davis, get to your boy McKenzie um Isabel Wright, uh, Stephon Diggs, and then Josh Allen is, is going to stiff arm a guy into the dirt when he gets pressure. So to say the most dominant team ever, no. I have to say the 2007 Patriots were the most dominant team ever. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to to say who the most dominant team ever is, right, in any sport. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. look, I'm a, I'm a Bears fan, right? And what do people always say? Bears fans can't can't let go of 85, right? That exactly. defense was was ridiculous. But, I j- like, this team, like, they've got really good running backs. They've got really good wide receiving core. They've got a quarterback that can throw the ball and run the ball, and he's the size of a freaking fullback. Yeah, he's Like, big. you you – you've got a defense that is just like, I mean, look, I know look, Tennessee is not world beaters by any stretch of the imagination offensively. They're not that team that, that I, you know, feel can, can score 40 points at any given moment. Right. Unless Derrick Henry accounts for 35 of them, Which he won't, you know, he's that's, over the hill, right. Well, no, but that's, that's not, you're an idiot. Okay. That's not, uh, that's not what, it, what it, what impresses me about the Buffalo Bills is that they just look like nobody can touch them. They look like nobody can compete with them. They are just outclassed. They play two games, so I'm not going to get on, on this long rant of oh, this is this these guys are going to go 17 and 0 because look, it's right. it's impossibly difficult to go 16 and 0, let alone 17 and 0, and then run the the gauntlet in the playoffs. But if a team has a chance, it's this team. If there's a team with a chance this year to run the table, it's the Buffalo Bills. So when we look at the Buffalo Bills schedule, let's just look at the next four to five weeks alone. If they can come out in this four or five weeks unscathed, we might be looking at a 17-0 and season. And I would definitely be jumping on that bandwagon with you 100%. Because right, because week number three, they travel to my to Miami. My, my Miami is a very hot team right now. They come down for what twenty one or twenty eight points down on Sunday. Baltimore Ravens, you know they're not a terrible team. Uh, what uh, both on the road too? Yeah, they're both on the road. And Lamar Jackson threw for three hundred yards, I think, over the like like over the weekend as well. And then they're at home versus the Pittsburgh State Steelers. That's that's kind of a toss up game. You know what are you, what, what are you going to get from the Pittsburgh Steelers? And then you have at Arrowhead, and then the Green Bay Packers on Sunday night. So yeah. I mean. These next five weeks are very crucial for the Buffalo Bills. And barring injury, I, I got it would not surprise me one bit if they go five and zero through this next five streets five week stretch. But then they have the hiccup, exactly like you said, a division foe at New York Jets. So if there's a hiccup, it is going to be exactly what you said. It is going to be a, a division foe with somebody we don't know. AKA the New yeah. York Jets. It is probably going to be the, to be the new 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 York Jets after that gauntlet 
of games. And, and again, then they got the Jets, and then they're back at home versus the Vikings. So that Jets game is definitely a trap game for them. Yeah, and, and when you mentioned all those games, the, the another one that came to mind as a trap game would have been that Steelers game between the that sandwich right. between the Ravens and the Chiefs, right? Mm-hmm. You, you get a, a good win versus a really good Ravens team, and then you you're looking ahead against the Chiefs in that matchup that everybody's going to be talking about, right? Exactly. Who's the best team in the league? Especially if they're the both Chiefs undefeated. The Bills? And yeah, if they're both undefeated at the time, yeah, I mean that that will definitely be the talk of, of the NFL. And that game might even get flexed to a Sunday night game. Um, I think but, it's too early to flex games. Yeah. Well, the NFL does what the NFL wants to do. So, right. I mean, wouldn't you want that as a primetime game? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I would, you yeah. know, but it's, I don't know that, uh, I, I, that might be a trap game too. the Steelers game, the Jets game that you talked about, but I just, I don't see this team having a letdown because I mean, right now they just it, everything looks so easy. Yeah, well, I mean, well everything maybe, looks so easy. Maybe so that could be why they have a letdown is because everything has come so easy. They flexed on the Rams. What? What? But they beat them by ten or twelve points. I can't, can't, can't remember what the week one score no, was. No, it was like forty-two to ten. Okay, yeah. Well, and then like last week or y- y- yesterday, they 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 won forty-one to seven. So yeah, it was thirty-one to ten against the Rams. Just, just, just because it's been so easy, that could be their let up versus one of these lesser teams. Like, 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 hey. We dominated the top teams in the NFC and the AFC all ready Super Bowl champs and then the the number one overall seed in the A and, and the AFC. We can take the foot off the brake or the like the gas yeah. a little bit. Like that could be their biggest let up. Who would have thought that going into week three we would be talking about how good of a matchup the Bills versus uh Miami Dolphins is? Like the way Tua and and and, and, and Waddle went at it and, and absolutely just brought back <laughs> the right. dolphins this weekend. I mean, you know, I, I played, I played against a guy in fantasy team who sat Jalen Waddle, sat Tua, and started Trey Lance. Boy, did he have a bad week? Yeah, that, that would, <laughs> that would really upset me a little bit. <laughs> 